Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny And we are Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So today we're going to do another reaction video and this one is from Zakir Naik. Striking the disbelievers at their next in the Quran. Dr. Zakir Naik. This is when Dr. Zakir Naik was in Nigeria in 2023. So without any further ado guys, let's get it. In the war, when you meet the unbelievers, you smite at their neck. I am asking you a question. If a robber enters your house, what will you do? Will you give him a cup of tea? No, but it's not enough. I'm asking. I'm asking you. Will you a cup of tea? Suppose the robber comes, tries and rapes your mother. What will you do? No, I do. Why? Yeah, and you're a man of peace. If a robber comes and wants to rape your mother, what will you do? I'll fight him. Then my other question is. No, no. Because I've seen something happen last year. In the university in Sokoto or in Polytechnic, where a Christian lady was killed and she blasphemed against Muhammad. I can't hear you. That a Christian lady was killed and she blasphemed against Muhammad. Ah. Yes, so what's her name? Wazun to Misha. So my questions go like this. It has been preached severally that Islam is a religion of peace. Then in the Quran I found out in Surah 47, verse 4, and I quote. 47 verse 4, what does it say? When you encounter those who disbelieve, strike at their neck. Then when you have rooted them, bind them faith firmly. Then either release them by grace or by ransom, until all lay down in burdens. Had God will, he could have defeated them himself, but he thus tests some of you by means of others. As for those who are killed in the way of God, he will not let their deed go to waste. So if Islam is a religion of peace, then why will God now ask you to kill a fellow person that because he doesn't believe your religion? Very good question. Brother is quoting the verse of Surah Muhammad chapter 47 verse number 4, but out of context. You know, out of context? He is quoting, therefore when he meet the unbelievers in fight, he forgot the word in fight, smite at the neck at length. If you read the earlier verses, it's talking about a war. A war with unbelievers. And verse number 4 says, In the war, when you meet the unbelievers, you smite at their neck. I am asking you a question. If a robber enters your house, what will you do? Will you give him a cup of tea? No, but he's not talking about I'm ask, I'm asking you, will you a cup of tea? Suppose the robber comes, tries and rapes your mother, what will you do? I'll fight him. Why? Yeah, and you're a man of peace. If a robber comes and wants to rape your mother, what will you do? I'll fight him. Then my other question is... No, no! Because I've seen... So allow me to learn now. <coughs> but this is not a robber. This is talking at a... Read one number one. Go from verse number one. Those who reject Allah and hinder in the fight. Those who believe and do righteous deed. This because of them reject them. Then they come to war. The enemies of Allah, when they come to war, don't get scared. So I'm asking you a question. If, if Nigeria has a war with another country, another country, the army general of Nigeria, what will he say? Oh, soldiers, don't get scared, <coughs> fight them. He not say, okay, go, when they come, you give your neck at them. What nonsense are you talking? So why ask this question? Let me complete the answer. You asking the question, now you know your trap. Let me complete the answer. So this is talking in the battlefield. In the battlefield, when you kill the enemies, who come to kill you, this is peace. Okay, what does the police do? The police of Nigeria is supposed to keep peace, correct? How do they carry a gun? Those who want to disrupt the peace, so the rule is, you can use violence as a last resort to maintain peace, those who want to disrupt peace. Do you understand? That means you can use violence against those people, against those criminals who want to disrupt peace. This is the golden rule. That's the reason every country has a police, has an army. Just because Nigeria has a police force, that doesn't Nigeria doesn't want peace. It wants peace, therefore it has police. So same way God is telling in the Quran, when the enemies come to attack you, in the battlefield, don't get scared, you strike at the neck. So what is wrong with it? It doesn't mean, because you have to follow the Quran as a whole. Verse number Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32 says, If anyone kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder, or for spreading corruption in the land, he has killed all of humanity. That's a part of the Quran. 
Two verses cannot contradict. That means these people have, are spreading corruption in the land. Do you understand? So if you are spreading corruption in the land, that time you can kill them. Do you understand? But killing any, any innocent human being is like killing the whole of humanity. Is there any verse in the Bible which says, if you kill one innocent human being, you have killed the whole of humanity? Is there any verse in the Bible? So which is better for peace? Quran or the Bible? Peace. Which is better? Peace. Quran. The Quran says, if you save any human being, innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity. Is there any such verse in the Bible? So which is better? Peace. At the same time, in the battlefield, when the enemies come and disrupt peace, fight them, kill them, no problem. Sir, you understand? Let me say something. Why I ask this question? Is have you understood the answer? Yes, I have understood. Now do you understand that Quran is talking about peace? Okay, sir. Why I ask this question? Because last year... No, why you asked? I don't want to know. You asked a question, I don't want to know why you asked. You got the answer, Khalas, matter is over. I, I want to give you a reference to the question. Sorry? I, came up, I want to give you a reference. Something, you want to give the reference, I want to give the answer. Something happened last year in a university in Sokoto or a polytechnic where a Christian lady was killed and she blasphemed against Muhammad. I can't hear you. That a Christian lady was killed that she blasphemed against Muhammad. Ah, yes, so? You get? So, and I observe that when a Christian and a Muslim are interacting religious discussion and the Muslim get provoked, you kill ah. and you blaspheme. The brother asked the question, there was a Christian in you did blasphemy. So the rule of the Quran is for a Maida. Chapter number 5, verse number 33. Anyone who urges the war against Allah or his Rasul, you either execute them, or you chop off the opposite hands or live, or crucify them, or exile them. There are four options. Anyone who urges the war against Allah and his Rasul, anyone that does for me, either execute, either execute, either chop opposite hands and legs, or crucify, or exile. Four options. Now, why they took the option of that, you have to ask them. So, this is the rule of Allah in the Quran. You cannot blaspheme God. It's a big sin. Okay. So, this is the rule. This is for peace. Because if you don't do that, that lady will do more corruption, the full world will be unpeaceful. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Yukata Kesi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What do you think? I thought the blasphemy was it was Muslim. from yeah towards oh. Muhammad. Do you understand? And then he mentioned God. Mm -hmm. if bless, if you, <clears throat> so that means Muhammad is God. According to those people who ended up killing the I don't know. Do you understand? So but even there's somewhat a contradiction. <clears throat> even if Allah has given four Truth. ways in which you can yeah. deal with such a situation. No. In today's world, are they acceptable? I think it's being ruthless. Exactly. You, Why are you taking someone's things? life because they said something? Yeah. Why not educate them instead? You know. Why crucify them? Why cut off their limbs? How? In today's world, I'm trained. I don't know. So in this situation, how does killing her bring peace or restore peace? What are you thinking though? I'm trying to think there's so much contradiction in this part, you know. So he asked the question to that, if someone comes to your house and rapes your mother, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand there and wait? Of course, that's a natural instinct. I want to attack and beat them up. If I have a gun, obviously, I don't want to kill them. Do you understand? Because according to the law, if you're coming to my house, you're coming to steal, you're coming to do a soft defense. Even if I kill you, I'll still win the case. But again, now that's the, the law of the land, the law of whatever. So now we're coming to this other part of religion and whatnot. Is it good when you kill somebody, you take someone's life? who wanted to uh, take the life of your child, the life of your mom or anything, or maybe has done a bad act. Do you understand? Is it right? Do you understand? What can we do in that act? What power do we have that we say, you know what, 
let's try and put God aside and let's take this in our hands. Do you understand? Oh, does, does God allow? Cheek? Yeah. The Quran is clearly saying, do something about yeah. it. Or oh, 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 is God allowing us to go ahead? Is He giving us a green light to go ahead and do whatever we want to do? You see, so now here, it's a very controversial topic. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Which people out there who believe that you shouldn't take, things you shouldn't into take your hands. things into your hands. We shouldn't kill people. When you kill someone, that's already automatically just a sin. a sin. Do you understand? What can we do? In the Bible, there are so many verses we see where God orders Solomon to go and kill. God orders this to go and... Do you understand? So do we follow what verses say in the Bible or certain verses say in the Quran? And again, you will find in, in the Bible there are other verses that contradicts what has been said before and all those kind of things. So now, what do we do? What do we follow? That's why I'm There's saying... There's too much contradiction. Yeah. Imagine if every religion was like this. Should Christians go out and execute Muslims because they say what they say yes. about Christianity? So that's even going to wage more war or Jesus than, or God. Yeah. Do you understand? It's going to create more war than peace. Exactly. Do you understand? For, for us to have peace, number one, we need to love ourselves. I understand that uh, love your neighbor too. We, yeah, we need to have that high love. That's the most important thing. I came to a realization that this world we live in today needs balance. They should always be balanced, the yin and yang, where everything has to be at a state of balance. Equilibrium. Yeah, equilibrium. Yeah, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. Equilibrium. That's the word I was looking for. It has to be there because... You can't be rich. E everyone cannot be rich. They must be rich and poor for it to have balance. Not everyone has to be at the purest. We need to have people who are not pure so that we can teach them to become pure. The impure ones can try and bring down the pure people. So there's that balance. Otherwise, if everyone would love everybody, then uh, what's going to happen? Let's think about it. If everyone was rich, and think about it. I don't know. Maybe there will be a certain place where everyone is rich and everyone is living in the, the best place ever. But now you start looking at those conditions. How are if if the rich people are living very rich, then that means they're depriving other people of something. Of something. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the people who are rich today, they know certain things that the poor that doesn't know. So that means. They have certain knowledge that they don't want to give to a regular person. The moment they give to the regular person, guess what's going to happen? Most probably they're going to misuse that knowledge. They're going to use it to their uh, whatever and whatnot. That's why sometimes it says, if you give me a gun today, because I have the knowledge, I've been taught how to handle it with care, with a lot of discipline. I may not want to shoot anyone. But if the moment you give it to someone who is careless enough, he can be able to go and just do whatever. Do you understand? So that's why there are those laws where guns are not supposed to be given to. Just anyone. To anyone. But there even are certain if you have people. a gun, someone comes into your house, you know you have the choice mm -hmm. to take them out completely mm -hmm. or just shoot where you disable whatever the... To, so that they discontinue what they're doing until the police come. Of course. That's why even law has, um, I can arrest someone, do you mm -hmm. understand, until the police come. As I've arrested this person, doesn't mean I should do anything to them. I will let the police do with them, the government do with them, and that's it. Yeah, Citizens but, arrest. Yeah, but now, how, how, how knowledgeable are you to that position? If I have a gun, no, but if someone well, comes to steal... In the context where yeah. you have this knowledge... Oh uh, yes. You personally I mean, would you want to kill someone or just shoot the arm leg Exactly. Or it so is? if if someone is coming to steal with an aim of stealing or with an aim of wanting to kill me or kill anyone, my first instinct will like, okay, I want to kill him, but no, wait first. Let me try and shoot the hand or the leg. Then you have to be really good at it. Because yeah. just aiming at the leg is, is as hard as aiming at this part of the body. Do you understand? Aiming at this part of the body is easy because it's open. 
the leg and the hand is kind of you know uh narrow so you have to be really good at what you do sometimes anyway. that's why people fire warning shots yes yes you can ones, yeah you can yeah the... exactly you can fire one if the person really um uh, adjust with the, the shot and tries to run away well and good but if it's trying to advance then there are certain precautions that you can take to mm -hmm. know where to attack and what to do but now not everybody goes through that kind of knowledge and training that's why they they don't give these kind of things to everyone it also comes with the knowledge it's, it's really it's yeah it's i don't know what do you think the conversation would have been more interesting had they given it more minutes because yeah. this is not doing it justice. I feel like That's missing not, yeah. some part of the conversation. And I feel Dr. Zakinaik was also trying to rush it. Yeah, the guy had a so point. There's so many people that have to ask questions. Yeah. The guy has had a point because he was trying to say there's an incident in, in a certain university where a lady was trying to to go against... Um, was blasphemy. Yeah, was, was, yes, was blasphemy. Was, towards Muhammad. Muhammad and the Muslims ended up killing and he pulled up a verse in the Bible that says there are how many rules? four or five Quran. yeah in the, in the Quran four. four rules where if you uh, go against these rules God but now this is Allah over here and this is Muhammad on this other side so does it mean that if someone goes against Muhammad's teaching that person should be executed that that means that we are going against god's words i don't know man it's tricky like but we're here to learn though if yeah just let us in the comment section what do you think concerning this topic let us know down below yeah. your explanation is really going to help us because and religion we want to understand this particular yeah. topic at hand religion has come too far man i know if you go back in the days, you realize how these religions were formed and how people were really forced into it. You tend to, to believe that, uh, do we really need religion in our lives? Do you understand? Yes, I understand we need like a manual that guides us. Already we have those manuals and we have uh, certain religious texts which we can follow. But do we need a religion? Do you understand? Someone said, we don't need leaders. We don't need leaders. We can lead ourselves. Which I, I feel like it's true. Because leaders will try to mislead. But the moment you can lead yourself as a person first, then we can be able to do whatever we want to do at a very advanced level. I don't know. So let us know in the comment section below what you think. Let us know what you guys actually think about this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.